ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor and today we're going to have something I've not done before. We're going to have a quick look ahead and make some recommendations for the upcoming season of Ranked Battles here in World of Warships as we head into Tier 7. Now, I've never done one of these before, and what I suspect is a lot of you are going to kind of nod your heads and a lot of you are going to come with pitchforks and things because I didn't mention your favorite ship. Understand, there are really good ships, there are some solid ships, and there's some piss poor ships in just about every tier. And I'm going to highlight a few along the way. I'm not going to talk about every ship, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that your ship of choice is bad. It just means that if you're flailing about and looking for some ideas as to what you should be playing this ranked season, I'm going to make some recommendations and so give you some ideas. So let's start with ships that I would absolutely recommend. Top of the list, number one pick, of course, one of my favorites, Premium German Destroyer Z39. I know a lot of people find the 150mm guns off-putting, but Z39 is the complete package for a destroyer at Tier 7, especially in a format where you know she will not be harassed by airplanes. These guns may not have in the watch much in the way of fire, but they absolutely make up for it with solid alpha damage and the ability to win gunfights with low health cruisers as well if she should find herself in that situation. The torpedoes are very workable, uh, and while her 6.1 kilometer detection when fully rigged for stealth is just merely average for the tier, her health pool is bonkers. Over 22,000 hit points with survivability expert on her captain. Her long-range German Hydro makes her a fantastic escort for any friendly ship she happens to be near and turns her into a bloodhound when she needs to root enemy destroyers out of smoke. This ship is a monster. Take it from me. I've played this ship in previous Tier 7 competitive brackets, you know, ranked sprints and stuff. She is the real deal. If you own one of these, I highly recommend it. Next on the list, Tier 7 Pan-Asian Destroyer Gajamata. The Pan-Asian Destroyer Tree is pretty hit or miss, but one of the highlights is this little boat at Tier 7. At first glance, the idea of torpedoes that can't hit enemy destroyers doesn't sound all that awesome. But once you get past the first 8 or 10 ranks in any given season, the average destroyer player gets a lot smarter, and you're probably not going to be landing blind torps in smoke anyway. The Deepwater Torps, what they do is they allow you to get more reliable and more consistent hits against larger enemy targets, those big battleships and cruisers that you really need to be trying to land those things on. And Ganja can make really make her presence felt with these fish. And her guns also have some solid pop. Um, you'd be surprised what you can get out of these guns. They're, they're quite good. Her detection may be only average, again, 6.1 kilometers, just like Z39. But the quicker than average cooldown on her smoke generator consumable and the fact that she gets a few extra charges gives her some great team utility and ability to escape from kind of bad situations she may find herself in. Moving on, let's have a look at my last recommendation, and it may surprise some of you. This is French destroyer Vauquelin. Now, her detection radius is well above average at 6.6 .6 kilometers, but Vauquelin still has a lot to offer aspiring captains. For starters, her health pool is behind only that of Z39, and we're not talking about a huge gap. It's only about 1,500 points behind Z39. So she has a lot of HP to throw around the board. She mounts the excellent French 139mm destroyer guns, and then she backs those guns up with the main battery reload booster consumable, which gives her a huge advantage in any destroyer versus destroyer gunfight she happens to find herself in. And to top all of that off, her 8km torpedoes move pretty quick and hit decently hard, and she has three launchers worth. One port, one starboard, and one centerline. Vogelin may not bring a smoke generator into a match, but she has an excellent array of tools that will make her a mid and late game terror to captains with, in the hands of a captain who understands how to utilize all those tools. So now let's move on to some of the ships that maybe I wouldn't put in the top echelon, but are certainly excellent picks. Let's talk about Commonwealth Destroyer HMCS Haida. Now, the only reason that Haida doesn't make it to the, the recommended section of this list is that her high, is, in my mind, she has a very, very high skill floor. I consider Haida to be a destroyer that's at her best when she is played by a captain who has a very solid grasp of how spotting works and are just very good with destroyers in general, very comfortable playing the class. The Creeping Smoke is really useful, and she has a literally a best-in-tier detection radius, 5.7 kilometers. You marry that with her short-range Hydro, that gives her the ability to potentially bully enemy destroyers out of cap circles when she has your allies nearby that can help back her up. These are the same guns you find on Gajamata and, and British Destroyer Jervis in the same tier. They have a little bit of pop, a little bit of range, 
and they do really good work uh, and light, you know, light fires and beat up, beat up destroyers and, and cruisers and so on. The single torpedo rack is a downer, I'm not going to lie. But in the hands of a captain who understands how to play this ship to its strengths, Haida is a bloody monster. But I'll, I'll be warned, this is not a destroyer for somebody who's new to play in the class. Okay? Move on. Let's look at another tech tree ship. This is Tier 7 Japanese destroyer Shiratsuyu. Of the two tech tree Japanese destroyers at Tier 7, Shiratsuyu is the easier one to play. Akatsuki has more raw firepower, but Shiratsuyu has more going for her, largely because of her concealment. A detection radius of only 5.8 kilometers when fully rigged for stealth, Shira outspots every other Tier 7 destroyer except Haida. We just talked about that. Her upgraded Tier 90 torpedoes hit really hard for Tier 7, and her guns have enough pop to finish off wounded destroyers in the late game. If you do choose to play Shiratsuyu, do yourself and your team a favor and take the smoke generator in slot number two. You might be tempted to take that torpedo reload booster, but the smoke has way more utility in ensuring the survival of you and potentially your teammates. Last in the honorable mention category, let's have a look at Tier 7 American Destroyer USS Mahan. The American Jack of All Trades Master of None style destroyers are still relevant in competitive modes uh, of World of Warships. And the two Tier 7 American destroyers are similar in armament and playstyle, but a series of buffs over the years has, in my mind, catapulted Mahan ahead of Sims. Uh, premium, premium Sims. Not only does Mahan have more firepower, uh, she has an extra main battery gun and an entire extra rack of torpedoes, those torpedoes have more range than Sims, and the hull itself is faster than Sims by about 10%. This is not a, not a small gap. Sims' quick turning turrets do make her a better knife fighter, but you can make up a lot of that ground by investing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time in putting main battery modification to and sinking some points into expert markman, marksman on your Mahan captain. I highly recommend this ship. The smoke is, is American smoke. This is long duration American smoke. Uh, it's, it's very, very, it makes Mahan a great team player. Ships to avoid. Uh, this is actually a pretty short list. You look down, down the list of Tier 7 destroyers, you can actually make a case for most of them, but I'm going to start with one that I absolutely despise, and that is Tier 7 Premium Japanese Destroyer Yudachi. This ship is a mess. Her detection is mediocre. Her guns are, are average at best. Her one gimmick is that she has really long-range torpedoes, 15 kilometers. But that's, they're, that gimmick itself is largely negated by the fact that those torpedoes are slow and easily detectable. Opposing players, once, once a, a Udachi torpedo is detected, let's, let's assume you fired it at a battleship. That battleship, if the battleship spots the torpedo himself, he has nearly 13 seconds to react to Udachi's torpedoes. That is 50% worse than average for every other, all the torpedoes in the tier. It's crazy. That's more than enough time for even the fattest, slowest, dumbest battleship to make a course correction and maybe take one, probably dodge them all. Um, honestly, guys, either of the Tech Tree Japanese destroyers are superior picks to Udachi. If you want to play a Japanese destroyer, go grab your Shiratsuyu, go grab an Akatsuki, leave this thing in port, okay? The other dud in this tier is German Tech Tree destroyer Leberecht Maas. Though she has the same torpedo arm as Z39, that's nice, she has the absolute worst detection in the tier, 6.8 kilometers when fully rigged for stealth. Consider, okay, frame this in your brain for a minute, the French destroyer, Vauquelin, that we talked about, whose quote-unquote national flavor is having good guns and bad detection, is still stealthier than this thing, okay? To add insult to injury, Vauquelin also has more hit points. So she has better stealth, more hit points, better torpedoes, and better guns. Why would you just, no, just don't. Do yourself a favor and avoid Moss. All right, guys, there you go. That's a quick look, quick, quick primer on destroyers. I hope you enjoyed that. I've got some more coming. We'll look at cruisers and battleships as we get into this. And of course, rank starts today. So you guys get out there. Good luck. Be safe out there. Wash your hands and I'll catch you next time.